Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new mystery with Molly. If you are new around here, if you've never seen my face before, then hi, my name is Molly. And I post true crime videos like this every single week, so if you think that's something that you might want to stick around for, then definitely subscribe to the channel. And also make sure that you switch on the little notification bell next to the subscribe button so that YouTube will let you know as soon as I've posted a new video. This week we are going to be talking about the case of Betsy Ardsma. Um, a bit of a shorter case today as there isn't too much information about this story online um, and it is still unsolved to this day although most people who look into this case believe that they know who the killer was. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case in the comments because it's one of those where it seems pretty obvious who committed the crime but yet no one was ever charged. So yeah let me know your opinions in the comments when you have finished watching the video and having said all of that let's just get into it. So our case today takes place in the state of Pennsylvania in the US and it happened in the year 1969. And this is Betsy Ruth Ardsma. She was a 22 year old woman born on the 11th of July 1947 to her parents Esther and Richard Ardsma. Betsy was one of four children. She was the second child and the Ardsmars were just a very kind of normal middle-class family that lived in the city of Holland in Michigan. That was where Betsy grew up. She was described as being a very beautiful, sensitive and empathetic person and she was also very bright and intelligent. At the time of her death she was actually studying English at the Pennsylvania State University. Betsy also had a boyfriend at the time. His name was David Al Wright and this picture on screen now of David is one taken of him later in life. I believe it's the only picture of him available online. I couldn't find one of him when he was younger, when he was in college and around Betsy's age. But anyway, Betsy was absolutely smooth with David. She really adored him. In fact, a couple of sources state that he was one of the main reasons why she chose to go to Pennsylvania University because David was a pre-med student at the Penn State College of Medicine in Hershey and she wanted to be closer to him so that the two could spend more time together. Most weekends she would catch a bus from her university to Hershey to see David. And that's exactly what Betsy had been doing during the Thanksgiving holiday in November of 1969. She spent the holiday in Hershey with David and then after this David dropped his girlfriend off at the bus stop so she could travel back to her campus and that was the last time he ever saw her. She returned to her dorm room and then later in the day on the 28th of November 1969 at around 4 p.m. Betsy and her roommate Sharon decided to head to the campus library because they both needed to do some schoolwork. Betsy had to do some research for an English paper that was due to be handed in soon. So they went to the library and when they arrived they both kind of separated. They both needed to go to different areas in the library and Betsy went to the second floor to write her English paper. Now I believe there were only about 90 people in the library at the time which I think was quite quiet for the campus library. I think most of the other students were still at home since it had been Thanksgiving and they hadn't returned to university yet. So yeah it wasn't very busy which meant that there was no one who actually witnessed what happened next. Sometime around 4.45pm whilst Betty was alone in the library stacks someone approached her and stabbed her once with a hunting style knife in her left breast. As soon as she was stabbed Betsy collapsed to the floor and as she did I think she accidentally pulled books on top of herself and she led on the floor dying. Sources differ on this part but apparently a couple of people in the library later came forward to say that they thought they heard like a faint scream around this time, around the time that Betsy was stabbed but because it was so faint they didn't really 
think much of it. Whereas other people said that they didn't hear anything apart from a couple of books dropping off the shelves. But there really wasn't much sound made at all during this attack. And so because of that, Betsy wasn't discovered straight away. A few minutes after the attack, the library desk clerk was approached by a man and he said to her, quote, somebody better help that girl. And he pointed in the direction of where Betsy lay dying. Now, a couple of sources online say that there was another man with this man. So the desk clerk was approached by two men after the attack. So I don't know what's correct there. I don't know if there was just one man or two men. I don't know if the desk clerk just couldn't remember whether she saw one or two men, but regardless, neither of these men have ever been traced or identified because as soon as they said that to the person behind the desk, somebody better help that girl, they immediately left the library. They fled the scene. Now, despite the person behind the desk being told this by the man, Betsy wasn't discovered for between 15 to 25 minutes after she was stabbed when another student found her on the floor with books around her. And when the student alerted the other people in the library, everyone gathered around Betsy and they were all really confused as to what had happened. They actually thought that she had had a seizure or that she had just you know, fainted. They had no idea that she had been stabbed because surprisingly, there wasn't actually that much blood and the blood that she had bled or lost was well disguised by the red dress that she was wearing. So people in the library gathered around her and they tried to revive her and they gave her mouth to mouth resuscitation. But Betsy would have passed away within 10 minutes after the attack. She was pronounced dead when she arrived at the campus medical center. And it was then when doctors realized what had actually happened that she had been stabbed. Her body was taken for an autopsy, which concluded that she had been stabbed with a knife that was three to four inches long. The blade was three to four inches long. Like I said before, she was stabbed through her left breast, which punctured her pulmonary artery and pierced the right ventricle of her heart. The coroner said that whoever had done this to Betsy, whoever had stabbed her, had done it with, quote, significant strength and that the wound had bled internally into her lungs, which was why there wasn't much blood at the crime scene. She had not been sexually assaulted and there were also no signs of any defense wounds on her body. So there were no like, you know, scratches or bruises on her or anything like that, which suggested either one of two things. Number one, that Betsy was likely approached and attacked from behind. So she didn't see her killer coming and therefore she didn't have time to react. Or two, maybe she knew her attack and so she didn't feel threatened or unsafe around them and the attack was so unexpected that again she didn't have time to react and put up a fight. So now the police had a murder on their hands and a killer was on the loose. Investigators went to take a look around the crime scene, the library where Betsy was stabbed but frustratingly by the time they got there the janitors had cleared everything up, including a puddle of urine, which I believe came from Betsy. When she was attacked, she was so frightened that she actually wet herself. But yeah, they cleaned up the entire crime scene, meaning they were unable to collect any sort of evidence. Any evidence there might have been was just contaminated now. And so detectives turned to the people that were in the library at the time of the attack to see if anyone had seen anything. And a couple of people said that they saw a man fleeing the library just after Betsy was stabbed. And it's believed that this was probably the the same man that walked up to the desk clerk and said, quote, somebody better help that girl. And as I mentioned before, this man was never traced. And so he quickly became the main suspect in the homicide. The people who saw this man helped the police create a composite sketch of what he looked like. And this is that sketch. 
several people were questioned by detectives and I believe in the beginning of the investigation they did have a couple of suspects but they couldn't link any of them to the crime really and ultimately the case quickly went cold it stayed unsolved and it has remained unsolved for over 50 years now. So now let's talk about the suspects in this case. Um, I only actually came across like two main suspects online, the first being Betsy's boyfriend, David Wright. As you probably know from watching these videos, in pretty much every murder investigation, the police always look into the victim's partner because in a lot of homicides, the partner is the killer. Although from what I can gather, there was no evidence at all linking David to the crime. He was questioned by the police and he had a pretty rock solid alibi. He was studying at his school at the time of the murder and he had witnesses to back this up. Also, he had no reason to want Betsy dead. He and Betsy were really happy together and according to a couple of sources, David actually had plans to proposed to his girlfriend in December of 1969, literally about a month after she was killed. People said that he was just so heartbroken and distraught when Betsy died. The woman that he planned on spending the rest of his life with was now gone. Anyway, he was pretty much ruled out as having anything to do with Betsy's death. The police did not think that he was the one responsible. And the second suspect in the case, which is the suspect that most people believe was the killer, was a man named Richard Hafner. Now, Richard also attended Pennsylvania State University at the same time as Betsy, and he lived on the same campus. And he was said to have had a temper. He could get very angry, he was prone to violent outbursts, and there were many occasions when he was abusive and violent towards women. It's also important to note that a couple of years after Betsy's death, I think it was like five or six years after her death, Richard was actually arrested and charged for sexually assaulting a 12 year old boy who worked for him. And he was investigated several other times for molesting other young boys. It was rumored, so I don't know if this is 100% true, but it was rumored that Betsy and Richard had dated before, but that they stopped seeing each other in the fall of 1969 not long before she was murdered. Apparently Betsy broke the relationship off with Richard. I don't think it was really a relationship. I think they'd literally just gone out on a few dates, but apparently she broke it off when her and David Wright started getting serious. She realized that she really liked David and she wanted to make things work with him. And so she didn't want to see Richard anymore. So if that's true, then that already seems like a pretty, you know, likely motive for murder. Maybe he was jealous. Was Richard so angry at Betsy for breaking things off with him that he decided to get revenge and murder her. Richard was questioned by the detectives and he told them that he found out about Betsy's death on the evening of the 29th of November. So the day after she was stabbed, that was when he found out. But then seven years later, one of Richard's old professors came forward to the police with information that suggests he was lying about this, lying about when he found out that Betsy had been killed. This professor said that literally a couple of hours after Betsy had died, Richard turned up to his house, turned up to his professor's house, and he was very upset, and he said to his professor, have you seen the papers? He told his professor that Betsy had been killed and that it was all over the newspapers. However, by this point, like I said, it had been literally a few hours since Betsy was stabbed, and it hadn't actually been reported about in the newspapers yet. So why would he say this to his professor when her murder hadn't even been reported yet. And if you remember, initially people thought that Betsy had just had a seizure or something like that. They had no idea that she had actually been murdered until she was taken to the campus hospital. 
So how did Richard know that she had been killed unless he was there and unless he killed her? And even if he didn't kill her and he just found out about her death and her murder through maybe another student who was in the library at the time because I know gossip and stuff like that can spread very quickly through school and uni so maybe he was just told about it by another student but if that was the case why would he lie to his professor and say that he read about her death in a newspaper when it was proven that her death hadn't been reported about by that point I hope that makes sense I don't know if I explained that very well but it just doesn't really add up does it however this professor didn't tell the detectives about this until seven years after betsy's murder i think he came forward around the same time when richard was being charged with the sexual assault of that young boy the professor said that at the time in 1969 he did think that it was suspicious and he thought that maybe richard could have been involved in Betsy's death but like I said he chose not to come forward for whatever reason and by the time he did come forward by the time he did tell the police it was seven years later and Betsy's case had gone completely cold. Richard was never charged with Betsy's murder although a lot of people believe he was her killer and I think that I kind of do believe that as well we know that he was a violent man he could be really violent towards women he was a sex offender he went to the same university as betsy and it was rumored that he and betsy may have dated before but that she broke things off with him because she wanted to be with david maybe it was a jealousy thing for richard maybe he was just like well if i can't have you then no one can a lot of people also believe that he looks so similar to the composite sketch of the man that fled the library minutes after the attack but unfortunately there was never any solid evidence linking Richard to the crime and so he was never charged with it and he never will be now because Richard Hafner actually passed away in 2002 after he suffered a heart attack. A couple of other potential suspects were mentioned over the years including the Zodiac Killer and even Ted Bundy but most people who look into this case believe that Richard was the killer. But still over 50 years after Betsy was stabbed she has never had justice for her murder and sadly I don't know if she ever will. I believe this case is still open so it's a long shot but if anyone watching this has any information about Betsy's murder I urge you to get in contact with the authorities and I will leave some contact details in the description below. But what do you guys think about this case? Do you think Richard was the killer or do you think he was completely innocent? Do you think that Betsy was killed by someone she knew or could this have been just a completely random attack done by a stranger. I personally think that she was killed by someone she knew because like I mentioned earlier she didn't have any defense wounds on her so I feel like she probably knew her attacker and she didn't think she was unsafe around them so when they did attack her she didn't have time to react and put up a fight. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the case in the comments. Before I go, I just want to give a special shout out to the members of my Patreon page. Thank you so, so, so much for your support, guys. I couldn't do what I do on this channel without the support of my patrons, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. If anyone else wants to become a member of our little Patreon family, then the link is always in the description box of my videos. Please do give this video a thumbs up, and also, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you again next week for another mystery with Molly. Bye guys!